So the theme about this video is going to be about coups and uh, kind of conspiracy-ish, but you know, there's a lot of truth to it. Um, one viewer mentioned about covering Africa and NGOs. Well, I will kind of cover that. Um, it's not just there, it's other places like South America. But uh, there's a lot of uncertainty as far as certain um, western back nations go, and even eastern back nations that uh, China or Russia is backing. Uh, Egypt is one example. Um, we've actually covered where the U.S. is retracting aid. Uh, they're changing. I just covered an article about how Egypt and uh, the U.S. are redefining or reevaluating, reviewing their relationship with each other. As that's happening, um, you've had uh, this whole Sinai thing lighting up, right, with, quote, terrorists. And that's, of course, to keep the Egyptian government uh, strained. And that's why it says Egypt's uh, junta uh, losing the battle in the Sinai offensive. In the days leading up to the summer coup d'etat, Egypt's military started building up their military presence in the Sinai, forcing, uh, focusing on the Gaza Strip. So after the coup, with the endorsement from Israel, the offensive began in earnest, cracking down on Salafist factions they claimed were loyal to Hamas. So the thing here, the key is, is, you know, working with Israel, what, an, an endorsement from Israel? Uh, there's some people that think that the whole Muslim Brotherhood was a Western proxy run by Zionists, and, you know, the enemy of your enemy, whatever, is your friend, or even your enemy is your friend. So the Zionists like using the Salafists. That's why they work with Saudi Arabia and have been. That's why most of the stuff that's going on in Syria are these Salafists. Um, but there's some people that think that the Egyptian army isn't really for the people. Uh, they just basically are there during the uh, regime changes. And so, you know, the whole thing with Morzai, he, he's going down, right? Uh, Egypt's Mohammed Morzai accused of espionage plotting Islamist takeover. So what was referred to as a civil war, sectarian war between Shias, Sunnis, uh, now you have a problem because they're actually backing Assad, who's Alawite, and... Um, you have, it's Salafist versus Salafist. You have these rebels going after each other. Ultra-conservative Muslims like the rest of Syria are divided about their appropriate roles violence, but um, it could end up like Libya. But um, maybe Libya being a failed state was a failure, but it was a, it was a positive. It was a win for creating a state that's uh, going to be able to ship, you know, terrorists. They're, they're able to go there and train, be equipped and all that. But with pipelines being at the forefront of the financial agendas, um, besides other agendas, you know, laying pipelines like Qatari and all them and supplying Europe and competing against Russia, the Eastern Bloc, uh, it is kind of important to have stability there in that region. Back to what I was originally saying, I'll move on here, is, um, is you know, Israel, they need, they need some stability there, at least around them. It helps them become militarized uh, to have this threat, even though it benefits them while they're expanding their interests. But yeah, this is crazy. I mean, um, this is in uh, Iraq. Pilgrims attacked again in Iraq. We just talked about the human shield, the police guy that jumped in front of a suicide bomber. 73 killed, 121 wounded. I mean, what is, I mean, I've never said anything bad about really Islam at all. And I know this is, is some people say, and I do believe there's some uh, truth to that, that this isn't really Islam, uh, this Salafism uh, that comes out of Saudi Arabia. But, um, I, I mean, these people can't just travel. These Shiite pilgrims, they can't just travel to go to their freaking, uh, uh, their, their, not a holiday, but observance, you know, religious observance. They can't just go that without going to a, to these uh, little, they're called refreshment stations. They go there and basically refreshment stand set up for them traveling and, and, and get blown up. I mean, that's, that's just so messed up, man. And then these Slafas killing each other. And how are they going to run a country, right? And then to uh, other parts of Africa here, back to Africa, nearly 1,000 killed in two days in Central African Republic. And this is a, this is pretty crazy, though, yeah. These numbers are supposedly pretty big, but someone said that it's not about uh, Christians and Muslims, and I, I, I would agree with them about 50%. Um, but there probably is people that are being targeted. Like I said, I've seen the, the, uh, the reports on that as far as Christians, these African Christians saying that they don't want to be around these these Muslims, they just can't live around them. On the other hand, it is about recolonization. 
it's about creating refugees but recolonization uh, for for resources and they'll use whatever humanitarian guys or cloak they have to use in France all of a sudden all of a sudden you have what's going on in uh, Sudan and you had stuff in Mali kind of quieted down then and here we go again France faces revival of Mali militants then in the Congo, uh, in the Congo, the Central African Republic, in the past two weeks, this conflict has displaced more than 200,000 people in one city. So you got the refugees, you got the need to go there, uh, France, uh, the U.S. is actually getting in on it. Europe, I just covered this, said that they're going to back uh, France with sending European forces, or and even the like the U.N. is, to uh, Africa for Mali and uh, uh, Central African Republic. But like the uh, like the Sudan, uh, you know, someone made a good point. I like I said, I'm always learning about this, especially within Africa and that the politics and the history and about these puppet regimes. And in the Sudan, you have the West all up in arms, right? You got George Clooney on protecting South Sudan, right? What's going on there? Well, is it that their puppet regime, the West's puppet regime, is actually falling, and that would be a good thing? So they have to go and rush out, you know, to send George Clooney, right? I just sent 45 uh, military personnel, American troops, to the uh, South Sudan to protect the U.S. embassies as tensions mount. Uh, the U.K. shut its embassy, or we called its diplomats, I think. Three Indian peacekeepers killed in South Sudan, so the U.N.'s been attacked. You got Ban Ki Moon saying, you know, uh, something must be done, right? Ban Ki Moon. But it's weird because you have to try to decipher when they're talking about terrorists. Are they talking about? militant rebels who are rebelling against the puppet regime puppet regime or are they talking about actual al-qaeda extremists so they don't tell you the, the militants who conquered mali's vast north which could be the turk rebels are regrouping here right so i brought that up before so even if al-qaeda isn't actually there they'll just say wherever they, they want to go and get rid of any kind of resistance that's uh, trying to overthrow their their puppet governments they'll say oh al-qaeda is there or they'll send uh, George Clooney, who has a long relationship with South Sudan. Uh, you know, he says here he wants you to drink South Sudan's coffee. It's not about charity. It's about business, and it is, right? Oil is the key to South Sudan's fledging relationship with China, just like in Mali. I think they have uh, uh, either gold or some kind of precious metals there. Beijing's interest is not simply about multi-billion dollar investment deals. Uh, Russia ratifies a China oil deal. They're going to sell annually 31 million tons of oil to China. Under the deal to remain in force until 2038, oil exports will begin as soon as next year. The deal will reshape the geography of oil exports from Russia, currently the world's largest producer of crude. Most Russian oil currently goes to Europe via a network of pipelines from West Siberia. Right now, only a fifth of the country's oil is exported to Asia. So, yeah, Asia, you know, they... Want to get their? Uh, I think they they get their oil from the Sudan or somewhere in that region. Either way, I know Asia has a lot of in, invested interest in the in Africa. Um, U.S. help prisoner escape from custody in Bolivia. Uh, Bolivia, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, they've accused the U.S. government aiding American money launderer flee prison during an elite operation, which also involves uh, actor Sean Penn. It says the Hollywood star released a statement Tuesday admitted that he was with this individual at an undisclosed location in the U.S. Relations between Bolivia and the U.S. have soured over the past years. And Bolivia actually expelled a Danish group for meddling because they are doing political work against the government. It was an educational development agency. It says we are tired of tolerating uh, this agency politically and their political interference in Bolivia, we are tired of tolerating their promotion of internal conflict among the indigenous organizations themselves. In Venezuela, Maduro has been, you know, accusing the U.S. of trying to destabilize the country through the ele uh, electoral process. Uh, Dennis Rodman, that's their man, the agency's man, I guess, in North Korea to open the doors for America. So there's been all this talk about North Korea going to uh, uh, strike the South. They warned of a merciless strike against its neighbor in the K Korean Peninsula after southern activists burned effigies of the ruling King uh, Kim dynasty on the second anniversary of the death of the former leader. So it was contained in a message sent Thursday. I think it was by uh, fax. It said the rallies had insulted the highest dignity of the leadership and threatened to take merciless uh, retaliatory acts without prior warning. 
Then to Pakistan, we have 36 killed, mostly civilians at Pakistan's uh, Waziristan raids. The troops marched into a truck stop, a truck stop and uh, shot the drivers. They mowed down truckers by the dozen, declaring them all hardcore terrorists. Apparently, this is their attempt to try to pursue peace talks with the Taliban. Uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization, or SCO. Pakistan is poised to become a member of the SCO Energy Club. That would be a big deal. Turkey looks east after failed attempts to join the EU. That's, again, SCO. They, he reiterated his desire for Turkey, Erdogan have said. Um, uh, there were some other... Uh, Overtures to the East by Turkey as well uh, had to do with some kind of finance or buying a deal or rejecting a deal with the U.S. and the West. Uh, Turkey detains eight in corruption investigation, so they all have dirt on this. So when this happens, it has something to do with, with uh, uh, what they're doing, who, you know, who their masters uh, are, what they're not doing for them. Turkey's House of Cards moment is a uh, arrest and scandal signal, a crisis for Erdogan. They've had a lot of protests going on this summer to Thailand. Before, uh, just recently they had uh, a, like a Ukraine-type moment. A regime thugs firebomb protest leaders' home and threaten opponents. After weeks of cyber-stalking, uh, the regime's paid PR machine, including disgraced former uh, Reuters editor, uh, regime thugs have firebombed the home of an anti-regime protester. Uh, Thai protesters marched to oust Prime Minister and postpone the election. This is from Reuters. So the current uh, Prime Minister actually called a snap election last week when the protest reached that height. Um, it says here, uh, Sisto or Sis will fight Western color revolutions. It says uh, contain recommendations in this document that should help prevent conditions for the organization, organization of color revolutions in the territory of Sisto uh, member states. Some of the things that are proposed, I think this has to do with Ukraine, but uh, legal mechanisms for the protection of information space, an advanced system of countering the spread of ideology and external interference in color revolutions by filling an ideological vacuum and an emphasis on the positive experience of joint activity within the historical past. Formations of bases of the system counter information and psychological pressure against the government and population of these countries based on spiritual and moral values. A coordination of social, cultural, and humanitarian resources in these member states in combating the ideology of external interference and color revolutions, they call it, to ensure that the population of these states are accurate, objective, without misrepresentation of information. The CISTO uh, states decided to oppose the West, which they think actively influenced the minds of Internet users through NGOs and the media distorting the picture of public sentiment in the uh, CIS, thus preparing new color revolution. Anti-corruption protests in Bucharest take off as Romanians get political. There was a law that was passed which reduces criminal consequences for politicians and eliminates public investigation of their crimes. There's all kinds of laws like this in Japan, uh, some kind of a privacy, invasion of privacy law that protects politicians, no protesting in Egypt, uh, similar type laws in Spain. Italy's president fears a violent insurrection in 2014. Well, he should because they're, they've shut down train stations and stuff. Thousands of pitchforkers, the protesters, that's what they call themselves in Rome and Italy, demand government, they want the government to step down, basically. And in Russia, Putin needs to be concerned, too. His uh, approval right now, approval rating, is at the lowest it's been since 2000. And that's why I think we've seen this stuff. Putin will pardon his arch enemy, oil tycoon. This is as of today. Then uh, the riot, the pussy riot, as they say, members to be freed from prison. So trying to, you know, they're trying to get some credibility back, win some support. Like we were talking about in Bolivia, they expelled a Danish NGO for meddling in their affairs, trying to create uh, uh, basically conflict, internal tension. In Ecuador, officer has been arrested for coup plans. He's trying to, I guess he was trying to kill uh, the president, uh, Mr. Correa and being involved in a failed coup attempt. They said that the detained officer was one of the sharpshooters who opened fire on innocent people. Yeah, and it was in Italy and in Thailand where the police actually uh, put down their shields and actually sat down, literally to show support for the protesters. They're gonna have 20 Marines active duty to lead training mission in Central America. Or maybe it's just a regime change uh, task force uh, this is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.